Hi everyone, this is Daniel at QNAP and I want to talk to you about why HDD storage pools can perform especially well on QTS Hero NAS. And to do that, I want to go a bit into some first principles. So one principle to think about is that HDDs perform much better for sequential access than random access. So a file system that reads and writes as sequentially as possible can maximize the performance of HDD storage pools. And another thing to think about is your storage pool might have a lot of HDDs. So a file system that allows performance to scale well with number of drives can perform very well when you have a lot of drives. So in thinking particularly about the first principle, uh, but more sequential access means better performance, I want to talk about write coalescing and prefetch. And then I'll also mention inline compression, even though that's not as directly related to that first principle. So inline compression, you take data into the NAS's RAM, compress it while it's in the RAM, and then write it to the drives in a compressed form. And that means the megabytes per second you take into the NAS is greater than the megabytes per second you write to the drives. Well, if you have a uh, limitation of how fast your drives can take writes, you can write more megabytes per second into the NAS before you hit the limit of how fast those drives can take the writes because you're writing more megabytes per second into the NAS than onto your drives. Now to get back to that uh, first principle, that a file system that reads and writes as sequentially as possible can maximize the performance of HDD pools, I want to talk about write coalescing, which makes your writes to the drives more sequential, and prefetch, which makes your reads from the drives more sequential. So the way write coalescing works is that uh, if there's a bunch of tiny writes you do to the NAS, you hold those tiny writes in the RAM, you group them together into uh, larger uh, groups, larger chunks, and then write them in larger chunks on the drives so you can write more sequentially. Now prefetch is a bit more complicated, but it's really neat. So I want to talk about this. So what prefetch does is it can recognize uh, when you when you are accessing uh, more sequentially, it can recognize a pattern of access and then prefetch the blocks it thinks you're about to ask for. And the principle here is that um, you can read more sequentially from the drives if you don't have to read the blocks from the drives in the order they are demanded. And to really get into this, let me first explain an example when you probably would not even need prefetch. Uh, to, to read sequentially. Let's say there's just one large file. One user is reading one large file. So the file was written to the drive sequentially. So you got a block here, the next block was written there, next block there. So because the blocks of data were written sequentially, one user is going to read them sequentially. Don't even really need prefetch for that to be sequential. But where there's a problem that uh, prefetch seeks to solve is let's say you had four users reading four different files. User one is reading this file, user two that file, user three that file, user four that file, and they're all reading at the same time. Well, if they all read at the same time, then the order to at which blocks of data are demanded from the NAS could look like this. The first block of this file is demanded. Then the, se then the first block of this file is demanded. And then the first block of this file is demanded. And the blocks that are demanded are jumping from file to file, and therefore you're constantly moving to different parts of the disks. So at this point, all of a sudden, the uh, reads are not so sequential anymore. The blocks are being demanded in a way that's not sequential when you have multiple people uh, reading from the NAS at once. So what prefetch seeks to do is if it, if it recognizes that this is sequential access, let's say it wants to prefetch the next eight blocks of this file and prefetch the next eight blocks of that file and prefetch the next eight blocks of all these files. Once you're prefetching, you do not have to read the blocks in the order they're demanded. So rather than fetch this block and then fetch that block and then fetch that block and then fetch that block, you could fetch these eight blocks sequentially, then fetch these eight blocks sequentially, fetch, fetch these eight blocks sequentially. So the principle here is that if you can prefetch blocks, you don't have to read them in the order they're demanded. You can read them in the order that's more sequential. And now to be fair to other file systems, a lot of other file systems have a prefetch feature. But something I want to stress here is not all prefetch features are created equal. Um, for instance, how many people simultaneously can read from the NAS before the prefetch starts to fail? Or um, what if the uh, files were not written completely sequentially onto the NAS? For example, what if you had four users writing to the NAS at the same time? 
It could be that the first block in the drive is the first block from this file, the second block in the drive is the first block from this file, the third block the first block in this file, which means if users to read this file, they'll be reading every fourth block on the drive. So ideally, you want a prefetch that can recognize, oh, you're asking for every fourth block. You're doing a sequential read. And it can recognize that as an attempt at a sequential read. And for this user, hopefully, it'll fetch every fourth block. So you want it to be able to recognize a pattern of I.O. access even when the blocks for each file will not, were not written right next to each other. So the smarter the prefetch, the better this works. So other file systems will likely have a prefetch, but the ZFS prefetch is especially good to really help keep that access to the drives as sequential as possible. And now I want to get into uh, the, the second principle, which is that you likely have many HDDs in your storage pool, and therefore a file system uh, where the performance scales well with number of HDDs will perform well typically if you have a lot of, a lot of drives. So something cool about ZFS is it natively writes to all the RAID groups at the same time, and therefore it'll read from all the RAID groups at the same time in the storage pool. So if you had, say, three RAID 6 groups, you write a file, you're writing to all three groups at once, you're reading from all three groups at once. So as you add RAID groups, you get more performance. And it does this natively. Even if you add an expansion unit to the storage pool, it'll just, you'll get, you can get more performance then because you just have more RAID groups. And as long as they're in the same pool, it just writes to all the RAID groups at once, reads from all the RAID groups at once. So ZFS does a good job of scaling performance with number of drives. So these are just some of the things that ZFS can do. And there's things ZFS can do that also helps with SSD storage. But I want to just do one short video on why HDD storage pools do so well on ZFS. And something else that we've done to help improve performance and stability is limited the size of a RAID group to no more than 16 drives. So if you have more than 16 drives, you could do RAID 60 or RAID 50, but you can't, for example, do like a single 24 drive RAID 6. And we've done that to help with both performance and stability.